it's fall and some of you may have hatched or purchased new chicks earlier in the year or maybe even a couple months ago and you may be just oops <laughs> You may just be figuring out that some of those hens are, well, not hens. And if you've never had a rooster before, or even if you have, you may be thinking, now what? <laughs> and then there's that. That's why roosters get a bad rap. And for good reason. They're often seen as the pests of the farm, disrupting the peace and causing chaos wherever they go. But just how bad can they be? And are they really worth the trouble? <laughs> hey y'all, I'm Renee and welcome to Tater Town. With the rising interest in backyard farming and self-sufficiency, it's no surprise that more and more people are flocking to chicken keeping. But there's an often overlooked aspect of backyard chicken farming that can make all the difference in the health and happiness of your flock, roosters. Bryson, you wanna come up? Obviously, if you live in an area that restricts roosters, then you'll need to rehome him. If you are allowed roosters, there are other factors that will impact the choice you make. If you have neighbors close by, they may not appreciate that rooster and keeping him will also depend on how many hens you have and or if you already have another rooster. Personally, I'm in this situation right now. I currently have a two-year-old rooster, Bryson, and two of the five chicks I hatched this year are roosters. I have Chet and this is Nina. Now I knew Chet was a rooster early on, but Snina, that took more time to figure out. I was pretty sure, but didn't get a confirmation until a week or two ago when he crowed for the first time. Now, I can't make the decision for you, but I can certainly help to give you the pros and cons of keeping a rooster or multiple roosters. And keep in mind that having two teenage roosters right now is very much new to me. I'll bust some myths and I'll let you know what my plan is for my two new additions. I feel like a pushover sometimes when people tell me that they got rid of their rooster within six months of having him. Like some of you, I didn't choose to have a rooster. When I, then there's that. When I ordered my chickens, I only wanted females, but sexing a chicken isn't 100%. And one of my buff Orpingtons, the smallest one in fact, started showing a prominent comb at about four weeks of age. And I thought, oh no, but we live in a rural area, so I knew I could keep him, even though I was just a little bit disappointed. My thought was, if this guy beat the odds and made it out of the hatchery alive, I was going to give him that fighting chance. And I'm so glad I did. This is not him. Hi. Hi, Margaret. Now I wanna give you the reasons people are so averse to having a rooster. First is crowing. In my experience, the disruption of a crowing rooster is often exaggerated. Sure, they crow in the morning and during the day, but it's not like they're screaming nonstop. However, noise pollution can be an issue. I mean, let's be realistic. These birds can be loud, like really loud, especially when you're right next to them. But the biggest issue is when they're young. And if you've never had a... Chet! That's the other rooster. And if you've never had a rooster, it can be an eye opener, literally. When Bryson learned to crow, it really seemed like he did it all the time. Starting at about three or four in the morning, and he'd do it like every 30 minutes. And the coop was right outside my bedroom window. And if it was nice outside and we kept the windows open, I actually thought he would end up being dinner at some point. Seriously, that is a joke and I wouldn't do that, but the thought did cross my mind. So I started working on soundproofing the coop. Ultimately, I didn't need to do that because after several weeks, he got into a routine and he stopped crowing at the butt crack of dawn. But it took time and a lot of patience. And it was really no more annoying than the random dogs barking all night, the coyotes yipping, or the cows bellowing all night and into the morning. And then there's the aggression. Okay, knock it off. 
Roosters are naturally territorial and they'll stop at nothing to defend their turf. Right, Bryson? Okay, that's not entirely true. Some roosters are pushovers and they'll run from any danger. But the ones that are aggressive, they can lead to some pretty hairy interactions with people and other animals. Again, I find this to be the most troublesome when they're young. Bryson was my buddy until hormones. Man, when they hit puberty, they are a mess. I guess it's not unlike human teenagers in that respect. Oh, oh yeah? What's up, buddy? I could tell when he was going to be a challenge by looking at his legs. When he had a rush of hormones, his legs would turn red, almost hot pink. So I knew to tread lightly around him at that point in time. And I started researching all I could about rooster behavior and what I learned gave me more compassion than anger toward him. I was still annoyed, but way less so than I may have been. These poor baby boys are being dosed with hormones and they are acting purely on instinct. He'd be chilling on my lap one minute and biting my hand and flogging my leg the next. It's like he had no idea what was going on. It was all so new for him. Everything was a threat to him. If I had colored pajama pants on, he'd attack those. If I wore big boots in the run, he would attack those. Anything new or out of the ordinary was a danger and he treated it as such. But that's the point. A rooster's instinct, his job, is to protect the flock. He was like this for close to a year and then he calmed down. Even at two years old, he still comes at me, then abruptly stops like, hey, she's not a threat. And sometimes he does get me, but it's more of a rare occurrence these days. Now, Every rooster is different, but I think most people never let their rooster get to this point. Once they become aggressive, that's it. They get rid of them in some fashion. And that's okay, especially if your rooster is a danger to your child or another person or animal. That is a personal choice and every situation is different. I chose to keep him mostly because I was understanding of why he was doing what he was doing and I had the time and a good situation to work with him. And I learned a great deal of patience for having three donkeys over the years. They taught me a lot, but that's a topic for another video. Roosters are also notorious for their competitive and territorial behavior and will often fight with other roosters for dominance. This can lead to some serious injuries and even death in some cases but injury is more common than a fight to the death. Usually the fighting ends when one rooster backs down. But again, this will all depend upon the scenario. Is it father and son? Are they brothers? Were they raised together? Or are they adults that are being newly integrated? And it's not unlike the fights that take place between your hens. The pecking order isn't just for hens. Both hens and roosters fight each other for their place within the flock. Remember, a well-socialized rooster can be a gentle giant, but he will always be guided by his natural instinct. Egg laying and breeding. Another common misconception is that roosters are only necessary for breeding or you need a rooster if you want eggs. Neither of those is true. Hens will lay eggs whether or not you have a rooster. They just won't be fertilized, but you will need a rooster if you wanna hatch those eggs into baby chicks. Even if you're not planning on hatching chicks, a rooster can play a vital role in maintaining a healthy and balanced flock. For one, as I stated earlier, they're natural protectors, always on the lookout for predators and alerting the hens to potential threats. I have witnessed this many times, especially with Bryson, when they're free ranging or when a hawk dive bombs the run or when a dog is nearby. He has a particular noise he makes and the girls, they run toward him and then to safety. And he steps in front to guard them. And I just started witnessing this behavior in the new cockerels as well. But beyond just protection, roosters can actually improve the dynamics of your flock. They help to maintain order and reduce stress among the hens, which can lead to fewer fights and a more peaceful backyard. I have seen Bryson break up fights between the hens, which is pretty cool to watch. And let's not forget about romance. 
a rooster can even help egg production by stimulating the hens and encouraging them to lay more eggs. When the girls were beginning to lay, he would show them where to go by burrowing down and sitting in an area with his tail feathers up in the air. And when the hens lay, there's this back and forth between him and them during the egg laying song. It's really cute. Super loud, but cute. He also does what's known as tidbitting, where he finds food and clucks to call the hens over to eat. He always eats after the girls do, and he really is good with them, except for the mating part, which brings me to the next point. The hen to rooster ratio. Can you have too many roosters? Yes. Can you have too many hens? Yes. This all depends on how much space you have, if you free range or not, and flock dynamics. The ideal ratio for standard size chickens, it's one rooster to 10 hens. Now again, this depends on the breed, the temperament, all of those things. Bryson was just fine with seven hens. I probably wouldn't have less than that because he does mate with all of them. Any less and he'd probably do some significant damage to their backs. Then again, you could always invest in some hen saddles and that could help manage the problem. I do have a video for that and I'll put that up in the in video links at the end of this video. Now, as I increased the number of hens to 15, he was starting to get hen pecked. I have two, maybe three hens that will do some damage to his comb and waddles. So I'm always keeping an eye out for this. There have been times where I've come out to the run and I notice blood on the hens. So as I start checking everyone out, I then look at Bryson and the poor guy is dripping with blood and he pretty much lets them get away with it, though he has been defending himself a little bit more lately. So yeah, you can have too many hens and they will overpower your lone rooster. That is why I was really happy that one of my new chicks was a rooster. This would have given me two roosters to 19 hens, but now, well, now I have three roosters to 18 hens. Of course, this simply means that I'll need to get some more hens in the spring, so that's okay. But in the meantime, I'm keeping a close eye on how everyone interacts with each other. The teenagers are not challenging Bryson at all. In fact, he chases them away. But I have noticed the brothers challenging each other regularly. So far, it's low key, and they mostly stare each other down and then walk away side by side. They are currently attached at the hip, uh, except for right now, because he's attached to my hip. But that could change at any moment. And I'll be ready to make arrangements if it becomes a safety issue. One of the things I wanna do is start a rooster flock. That way, if I hatch more roosters, they will have a place so they can stay here at Tatertown. And I can also take in unwanted roosters if needed. I did wanna make one more comment about the new roosters or the three roosters that I have, I feel like Goldilocks and the three bears. I've got Chet, who is just absolutely terrified of me and runs away and won't let me touch him. It's a real challenge for me to, to catch him and to get him to sit on my lap for anything. I've got this little guy, Snina, who absolutely loves me. I mean, at least for now, like Bryson used to. Anytime I come out to the run, he jumps up on my lap and he is just content to stay here the whole time and get pets and attention. And then there's Bryson, who's kind of right in the middle. He loves me. He loves getting, he loves jumping up on my doing? lap and snuggling with me, uh, but do he doesn't necessarily make an effort all the time like this one does to constantly be up on my lap. And he will still flog me on occasion. Well, I think that covers most of what I can think of right now. But here are some do's and don'ts if you decide to keep your rooster. And of course, this is based on my experience and what I've learned. Don't treat aggression with aggression. Be calm, which I know is easier said than done sometimes. But if you react aggressively toward him, he's gonna continue to see you as a threat and the behavior won't change. You're only reinforcing that behavior. Remember, a rooster's job is to protect and procreate. The hen that is, not you. And I never ever let other people or especially children in with the chickens if I'm not closely supervising, even without a rooster. Have you seen the damage a hen can do? Every time I walk into that run, I know I can be pecked in the face or the eye 
even when I'm doing my best to pay attention to them. The same goes for my cows and donkeys. Sometimes the unpredictable happens, even with animals you think you know very well. Do keep his spurs trimmed from an early age. I didn't start to trim Bryson's spurs until they were getting ridiculously long, so now I have to trim them more frequently as I try to get the quick to recede. I plan to make a video on how I do that in case you're interested. Don't do the hot potato method or remove them with pliers. I mean, ultimately, you do you, but I can't recommend this practice, like, at all. It's like declawing a cat or dog without anesthetic. It's bone, it's live tissue, and it's gonna be painful and traumatic for the chicken. They can get a life-threatening infection or die from shock. But if his spurs are putting you or your other hens at risk, consult a veterinarian. Don't remove them at home. I am not against treating animals at home, and some things are very common, especially in farming practice, but if you're not sure what you're doing with any animal, it's best to consult a professional. There are options other than removal. Do give him a chance. If you have the room and a good number of hens, and you don't have laws prohibiting a rooster, why not at least try? It will be a challenge, but it may end up being a great decision for your flock. And if you can't keep him, do try to find him a good home. So there you have it. Roosters are pretty much the worst. They're noisy, aggressive, and just plain annoying. And if you're thinking of getting one as a pet, let me tell you it's not worth the trouble. Trust me, you don't wanna deal with the drama and the chaos that comes with owning a rooster. Right, right little boy. Again, this is me being sarcastic. And as you can tell, he is such a handful. Look at you, look at you being all cute. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to share your experiences or your questions about roosters in the comments. And thanks again for hanging with me here on Tater Town. And don't forget right, to Nina? hit that like button and subscribe okay. so you can you. see more videos that will help you do those things you never thought you could.